podcast episode of Jude. Fight, contend, do battle. When apostasy arises, when false teachers emerge, when the truth of God is attacked, it is time to fight for the faith. Only believers who are spiritually in shape can answer the summons. At the beginning of his letter, Jude focuses on the believer's common salvation, but then feels compelled to challenge them to contend for the faith. The danger is real. False teachers have crept into the church, turning God's grace into unbounded license to do as they please. Jude reminds such men of God, past dealing with unbelieving Israel, disobedient angels, and wicked Sodom and Gomorrah. In the face of such danger, Christians should not be caught off guard. The challenge is great, but so is the God who is able to keep them from stumbling. The Greek title, Ioda, of Jude, comes from the name Ioda, which appears in verse 1. This name which can be translated Jude or Judas, was popular in the first century because of Judas Maccabees. Died 160 B.C. or 160 B.C. A leader of the Jewish resistance against Syria during the Maccabee revolt. And I know we don't have the Maccabees in our Bible but they do have it in the Catholic Bible. And it is an interesting story. I have read it. It just tells how they went to battle. Amen? Yet today, we want to stay focused on Jude. A redwood tree fell in California forest, 400 years old. It wasn't destroyed by lightning. Storm had come and gone, but the tree stood. It wasn't felled by wind, bent by their force, but never uprooted. The tree didn't fall to fire. It had stood when others collapsed. What destroyed the redwood? Insects, termites, devoured it from within. It had stood for four centuries against the elements from without, but collapsed because of an attack within. Jude warned that the same can happen to the church. He wanted to write about the salvation we all share in verse 3, but he felt compelled to address a more sober issue, the danger of false teachers. Apparently, some had entered the church in verse 8. They were not students of the word, but rather promoter of sexual sin. They used God's grace as a license for passion in verse 4. The only solution, fight hard for the faith that was given the holy people of God once and for all time in verse 3. Jude is urgent in his mourning. What destroyed the redwood can destroy a church. But he is equally urgent in his encouragement. God is strong, Jude concludes, and can help you not to fail in verse 24. Can God really keep you from falling? To answer that, go to another tree on a barren hill a tree older than time, a tree which covers the mistakes of your past and the problems of your future. Be assured that tree will never fail. Amen. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. And verse 1 says, From Jude, the servant of Jesus Christ, and a brother of James, to all who have been called by God, God the Father love you, and you have been kept safe in Jesus Christ. Mercy, peace, and love be yours richly. Amen. Again, Jews warned Jewish Christians about false teachers and wicked people who found their way into the church. These people taught that because God's grace was free, 
behaviors that matter. And we're finding that on today. Do remind believers of the punishment immoral people receive. Some people claim to love God but don't obey him. Be careful that disobedience does not create a wedge between you and God. According to Gallup survey, confirmed by other polls taken over the past 15 years, 33% of all Americans over age 18 indicate they are evangelistical or born again Christians. That translates into 59 million Christians or one in every three adults who experience a turning point in their lives as they made a personal commitment to Jesus Christ. This information should grip us with terror. It means that the greatest revival in history has so far been impotent to change society. It revival without reformation. It's a revival which left the country floundering in spiritual ignorance. It's a chain in belief without a corresponding chain in behavior. I tell you, I'm still awaiting a form of Azusa in our generation. And I pray God and thank him. And I truly hope I get to experience it. Amen. How did the building blocks of the gospel become glued together with the cement of self-centeredness? The American gospel has evolved into a gospel of addition without subtraction. It is the belief that we can add Christ to our lives but not subtract sin. And I want to say that again, that we can add Christ to our lives, but not subtract sin. I tell you, my math ain't all that great. It is a change in belief without a change in behavior. It is a spiritual experience without any cultural impact. It is revival without reformation, without repentance. Hallelujah. Bless you, Father, for this word. The proof of religious conversion is to demonstrate that we have both added a relationship with Christ and that we have subtracted sin, repentance, and we multiply proof to a weary world by what we do, our deeds, our obedience. What we do must confirm what we say. Our deeds are the proof of our repentance. You know, it was interesting that a pastor on Facebook the other day said he went to a meeting of pastors and he heard so much cursing and so much contentment that he left with a headache and he knew he wouldn't be associating with them people any longer. And the only thing I could say is, Jude is letting us know. Paul has let us know. Jesus has also let us know that we have wolf in sheep's clothing and we must be watchful along with praying. Amen. A changed life is one that has added Christ and subtracted sin that attracts a world weary of worn out words. Obedient is the proof. You may be great at obeying some commands of God, but lax in obeying others. Which biblical teaching do you struggle to obey? Help others who are struggling and let them help you. Depend on God who can help you stand firm. And this is why the Bible tells us that we must confess our sins one to another. Because, you know what? If you don't confess your sin, sin to someone else, you may find yourself going through the motions again and again and again. And you don't understand how you got to that place. But if you confess it to somebody else, God will send you to somebody who can help you overcome that obstacle. Amen. Father, we thank you for this message on today. You know, we just 
feel that you are God who gives us life lessons. And we thank you for each and every experience that you give us. We thank you for the peace of Jerusalem. In Jesus' mighty name, amen, amen, and amen.